a very gracious thank you to the Polk County Sheriff's Office, which has been of tremendous assistance, and also CETO uh, Recovery, that is who is doing our diving recovery today. Please keep in mind that the information I'm sharing with you is preliminary. It is subject to change. We are still at the very early portions of this investigation. A few corrections from yesterday. The PA-28 Cherokee end number is November 9221 Delta. This airplane was not doing touch and go maneuvers at the Winter Haven Airport, specifically they did one full stop landing and two go around maneuvers. New information. Late yesterday, we completed the recovery of the J3 Cub and the fourth fatality. Today, we have just completed recovery of the Cherokee. We have recovered all but most of the right wing of the PA-28 Cherokee. Today we reviewed video evidence that has been shared with us as well as air traffic information. We do know that the right wing of the Cherokee came off during the impact sequence. Again, it has not yet been recovered. We also know from preliminary information and review of these videos that the J3 Cub attempted to dive to the right immediately before the collision. We know from radio transmissions that were made on the common traffic advisory frequency, which we call CTAF, that the PA Cherokee, PA-28 Cherokee was announcing its location and its intentions approximately 30 seconds after the Cherokee announced that they were performing a short approach to runway 29 at Winter Haven. We have another transmission announcing that they are making a left base turn to runway 29. About four seconds after that last transmission of the base turn, we hear the emergency locator transmission. That would indicate that the impact has occurred. We do not hear any transmissions by the J3 Cub. Please note that transmissions are not required here. We have met with the airport manager at Winter Haven. We have met with Sunrise Aviation, the operator of the Cherokee. We have encouraged all parties involved in this tragedy to hold safety stand downs to discuss the events that have transpired here. Our goal at the NTSB is to find the probable cause and to improve aviation safety. In this accident, we will try to prevent this accident from happening again in this area. Our next steps will be to complete our interviews here on scene and complete the recovery, which should finish up shortly. When we finish our interviews and the recovery, we will proceed to the next stages of our investigation which are no longer on scene. We will be following the wreckage to Jacksonville, Florida, where we will have a wreckage layout and where we will analyze the wreckage and examine it further to better understand um, exactly how these two planes came together as they did. We're very grateful to the community here for coming forward with their uh, witness statements and their videos. We would ask the community to continue to reach out to us at witness at ntsb.gov or via phone at 844 
373-9922 with any information that might help us in this investigation. That's all the new information I have for you today. With that, I can take um, a few questions before we complete our work. Yes, sir. You told us the new information about the, uh, the Cherokee. Was the uh, J3 Cub sky, uh, um, uh, uh, plane still doing what you said it was doing? It was on an approach for a landing, I believe? Or what, what, what were they doing? Could you reiterate? Uh, the, our understanding is that the J3 Cub was in one of their normal corridors for approach to land on the lake by the sea base. Again, that is preliminary information. That is our understanding of their uh, normal courses. Uh, a go-around maneuver is um, a maneuver that you make when you come in for landing, but then add power, and rather than landing, you climb again and go around to come back and try the maneuver again. This would be a normal maneuver given that they were performing short approaches. A short approach is an emergency maneuver that is routinely taught and instructed for pilots where you pull off the power and simulate an engine out landing. As such, a plane doing a short approach is going to be coming in perhaps tighter, closer to the runway and at a steeper angle, descent angle, because they have no power. They, their power is pulled back. Um, and lately, would you right say now. that the Piper, I mean, the, the Cherokee turned and the J3, they didn't see each other when they made that turn? And he tried to make an evasive mover to avoid colliding with them? How, how would you explain that in layman's terms? I mean, the basic in, terms? in layman's terms, I would suggest that the Piper Cherokee was making a left descending turn and came nose to nose with the cub, which attempted an evasive maneuver. Was, was we do not know what either pilot could see at this point in the investigation. It is too early to have that information. So the, so the Cherokee was basically doing a glide and glided before landing. Was, were they aborting the landing by, by doing it again, by redoing it again? The maneuver that the Cherokee was performing is a normal emergency maneuver taught to all pilots. With the engine power at a low power setting, you are correct in indicating that the airplane is at more of a glide coming in. And at the last minute before you land, if you're going to do it again, you would just add power, climb up and do it again. And you just keep practicing. That would have been normal training sequence for a flight such as this one. So they were to have no instrumentation to know that they were in each other's airspace. They would have nothing to be able to indicate to them that there's a plane here and we're here. We will be looking at the equipage of both of the airplanes to know what ability they had to see each other. Our initial, all initial indications we have, and again this is preliminary, um, were that the Cherokee was self-announcing its location and its intention. And the Cub was not. <coughs> this might indicate that the Cherokee was unaware of the Cub, and if the Cub could not hear what the Cherokee was announcing, they may have been unaware of the Cherokee. So there are rules regard there are regulations regarding the use of radios in this airspace, uh, and at these altitudes, it is not required that a pilot communicate or even have a radio in this airspace. So we never heard any kind of radar that would let them see what else is in the area. Um, it, our preliminary information at this point is that neither airplane had any kind of uh, avoidance system or radar that would have alerted them to the other aircraft. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The Piper Cub was not uh, equipped with a transponder which would have announced 
um, its location had the other aircraft been equipped with such I would imagine, with avionics. These, with these size planes and this kind of traffic, that it's a lot of line of sight, a lot of visual that the, each uh, pilot just kind of visually makes sure that they're spatially aware. Is that, would that be correct? That Every pilot has a responsibility to see and avoid. It's a basic uh, regulation that said there are limitations imposed by the airframe itself. Um, if you're a high wing aircraft, no matter what you try to do, even if you make clearing turns, you can't see directly above you and what your wing is hiding. Likewise, if you're a low wing airplane, you cannot see what's below that wing. So there are natural limitations <coughs> to the requirement to see and avoid or the ability to see and avoid. And that is one of the uh, items that we will be looking at is to determine what these pilots could see given their positions in space. Will speed also be a factor? I have time for one more question. Will speed be also a factor? <coughs> uh, we, have, we have not, we, we would presume that in the Piper Cherokee, the pilot rated uh, student receiving instruction for a commercial rating or commercial pilot certificate was the one flying the plane. As, as the student being instructed by an instructor. Uh, we don't have information for the J3 Cub. And with that, I must go and finish up um, my work here today. Thank you so much.